Hello and welcome to another episode of The Doug Geyser Show, brought to you by the Ashland University Journalism and Digital Media Department. I'm Cade Krakis, and as usual, I'm joined by the head coach of the Eagle football team, Doug Geyser. Coach, thanks so much for joining me here today. This past weekend, you guys took on the Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers in the regular season finale, taking them down in dominating fashion, 56-23. Talk a little bit about that regular season finale and you guys finishing off on such a high note. It was a culmination of all the efforts the guys have put in throughout the year, uh, a culmination of them learning the lessons of the season, a culmination of them growing together as a team, and it was a neat dynamic to be a part of. And to get a big win like that, it's just it's a great experience. When you talk about the preparation for a contest like the regular season finale, is there any difference there when it comes to just an average game in the middle of the season? Not, not really. If, if anything, as coaches, we're more efficient with our preparation. Um, we know a little bit more what our guys can and can't do. So you're, you're not going to worry about things that you might just try because uh, you already kind of know, hey, this is what we do well. Let's really emphasize this. If, any, if anything, the only addition is really it's the la seniors' last regular season game. And so you really pay tribute to them. We have a little ceremony on Thursday night, last day of practice, and uh, our team fight, sings a fight song. They do a final lap, and then we say our goodbyes. And, uh, you know, so from there, it just adds a little extra bump you need to go and finish the regular season. And it wasn't just an average week for you guys anyways, because Election mm -hmm. Day was on that past Tuesday. So for yeah. you, did that really mess around with the schedule when it comes to you guys practicing? E yes, it did. It, and it was something that we really um, talked about on Sunday, kind of prepping the guys for it. So, hey, realize now it's going to take a little extra special focus, because tomorrow, which is Monday, is actually Tuesday. And your off day is now going to be Tuesday, and that's now Monday. So by the time Wednesday came around, some of those guys didn't know which day of the week it was. <laughs> okay. So, but the guys did a great job fighting through it. And uh, we, we've, we've done the same schedule the last couple of years as well. It's just a matter of being, if you concentrate on it, you're going to get what you emphasize. And you emphasize the focus and, the, and that kind of concentration, the guys will buy into it. And offensively, the running back duo of Giovanni Washington and Larry Martin really thrived that game, going for four touchdowns combined. How, how effective is that one-two punch for you guys? It's tremendous. They, they play off of each other. One guy's in there and does a tremendous job. The other guy wants to show him up and compete and do better. So that dynamic there was neat to see that grow through the regular season and that, that the way they were able to do it in the last game was, uh, was, was nice to see. And in that first half of play, you guys put up 42 points, only allowing seven. I mean, you guys were on fire off the rip. So what really led to that incredible performance offensively? Uh, I think more than anything else, um, I think Jen Joseph had a, had a catch early on that kind of spurred us on, just like you know, Des Washington, or Des, excuse me, Des Lavertis did against Finley. And so that just kind of jump-started it right there. And hey, it's like, hey, hang on, here we go. And the guys were, you know, playfully competing to try to outdo each other, and that's a night, neat dynamic to be a part of. And defensively, we had a new player really step up into a big role. That was Isaiah Clark in the first mm -hmm. half, forcing two turnovers. For you guys, how important was that to have, like, every week a new player step up and shine? It's, it's, it's kind of neat to see it. it. It embodies the idea of team and next man up. Isaiah is a tremendously talented football player. He's encountered some injuries this, this year, kind of fighting through it, and to see him back healthy again, he just kind of let his talent show through, and it was nice to be able to piggyback off that. And obviously with the season coming to a close now, what are your thoughts so far on your first year as the head coach? Uh, I would say Ashland's a very special place. Um, the other thing I would say is Coach Owens definitely did not leave the covered bear. We had a lot of talented football players, a lot of strong leaders, a lot of Ashland Eagles, you know, full of Ashland men. And uh, they uh, made my job a whole lot easier and allowed me to kind of gravy train on some of their success. And uh, I'm indebted to that first team and to the coaching staff for you know, making a seamless transition, at least in my mind. And uh, it's, it was neat to see it come together with an 8-3 record. And yesterday you informed me that you guys were going to opt into the bowl game come mm -hmm. December 1st. Would you talk a little bit about that game and give the audience maybe a little bit of insight into what exactly it is? Yeah, the highest ranked team in the GMAC, the highest ranked team in the GLC, GLBC that does not make the playoffs are invited to play in the American Crossroads Bowl in Hammond, Indiana. That game will be on Friday night, uh, December 1st at uh, 7, p you know, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6.05 on uh, uh, Central Standard. And so it was a great opportunity. I thought it's a great reward for our seniors, great reward for our team to feel the bowl experience and get a chance to play somebody we haven't played before, get a chance to build on the 8-3 and three record, um, and hold, hold a standard of excellence. Uh, there, but with our win on Saturday, we became one of only 21 teams in school history to have eight-plus wins in a season. 
if we can get a ninth one, that would be we, we'd be one of only 13 teams in school history to have, 13, have nine plus wins in a season. So it's a great standard, and I'd love to I'd love to be able to see our guys have that see have those accolades and be rewarded for all their hard work. And so we're we're really looking forward to it. And obviously, once the regular season comes to a close, more than often not the off season come, comes around right the, the next day. Mm -hmm. But for you guys, obviously with the bowl game, what is the practice schedule going to be looking like for the next few weeks leading up to it? Yeah, we have three weeks before the, before the next game. And so this next week here, we'll practice three times. We're going to use it kind of a back to the future type of game, meaning we're going to work on fundamentals. There's not going to be a lot of banging with some guys heal up, especially the older guys, get a chance to continue to develop skills and go back to the beginning. And then just kind of build on that next week. We'll start in our, our McKendry prep next week and then full-fledged in-season practice on that third week heading into the bowl game. So it allows us to kind of take stock of things a little bit, catch our breath, do our evaluations and assessments, and then, hey, oh, wow, we get a chance to do this one more time. Great. You know, it's kind of lead into the offseason. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time here today. Thank you. Shortly, we'll be sitting down with Eagle wideout Jed Joseph. He will join us to discuss his play this season, how the wide receiver room has continued to thrive, and the upcoming bowl game. Stay tuned. You're watching the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm joined by wideout Jen Joseph. Jen, I appreciate you sitting down with me here today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So to kick things off, how's the team, specifically the offense, feeling after that dominant win this past weekend in the season finale? Oh, we're feeling good. It was good to get our eighth win of the season, and it was also good to send the seniors out with a bang. And so prior to this year, you were not really in that starting role. You primarily played on the kickoff side of things. So what has that transition been like for you to kind of be more involved offensively? Oh, it's been good. Um, you know, we've had the older guys uh, last season and then obviously I got to step in in a big role and uh, you know you got your teammates looking at you to make a big play and it's it's awesome it's awesome to you know step up and make those plays yeah for you big plays seem to be kind of running through your game all the time you kind of catch a slant and turn that into a huge carry so what off the field training do you do to get yourself to a, a, a moment where you have that much speed and you have that much poise on the field uh, that's all to our strength to have uh, you know just getting us in the weight room and on the field doing cone drills and stuff like that so uh, yeah, big shout out to the strength staff. And obviously the wide receiver room, you guys have a lot of depth there. How has the position group kind of relied upon one another in the locker room to really grow chemistry? Uh, just getting in there, getting film work in, you know, uh, especially Jake. He's a huge leader of ours, uh, letting us know what we did right, what we did wrong, giving us good jobs, bad jobs, you know what I mean? Just going about that. that For way. sure. And then Trevor Bzinski is put into that starting role this year. You guys have had a lot of new faces offensively. Has that been a weird adjustment for you guys, or is it due to the fact that, like, you guys have so many faces that it's easier to kind of get along? Uh, it's kind of easier. You know, we, uh, off season, you know, we prepare day in and day out for it. So I would say it's easier, yeah. Well, then obviously Desmond Libertas, one of your counterparts, will be graduating this year. What will the difference be without him next year? Uh, that just means the younger guys got to step up. Uh, Jamari, um, Tony, Tyler Davis, you know, those guys have to step up and, you know, make big plays. And do you think you'll be taking more of a big leadership role on next year? Uh, yeah. Uh, having Jake in the room really helped me to take on that role. And so, you know, if the young guys need a question, they can always come to me. And when Coach informed me yesterday that you guys will be opting into that bowl game come early December, what is it looking like for you guys in terms of preparation and kind of shifting that page to the bowl game? Yeah, just taking it day by day, um, having fun with it, and then go down there to the bowl game and get a big win. And obviously, after that bowl game, what are you guys going to do in the offseason to prepare for next season, specifically you because you've got one more year under your belt? Right, uh, just getting in the weight room, um, throwing with the quarterbacks, maybe grabbing a D DB here and there, getting in the indoor and, you know, doing one-on-ones, just stuff like that. Well, I appreciate you joining me today, and good luck in that bowl game. Thanks for having me. Of course. When we return, we will check in with Coach Dominic Orsini to discuss the offseason and recruitment for the next wave of Eagle athletes. Stay tuned. You're watching the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV.
welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm joined alongside Coach Orsini. Coach, since this is not your first time on the show, what's been new in the recruitment process since you last joined us? Yeah, um, when you really look at what we get to do during the season, obviously we're really busy with the season, right? And uh, the great thing that we get to do, though, uh, throughout the entire um, season is that we get guys on campus for game day visits. And, and to me, that's such a great experience for those guys because it allows them to immerse themselves in the amazing game day experience our players get. Uh, but more importantly, um, in my opinion, it, it's really the first step for those recruits to really envision themselves at, hey, you know, next fall I can be a National Eagle and, and what that looks like. So. And when you talk about those game day visits real quick, what exactly does that schedule look like for them? Is it an all-day thing or how does that work? Yeah, so they usually show up about three and a half hours before uh, the game. They come over, meet the coaches, hear from Coach Geyser. Um, and then really the big part is they get to come over and see what our guys do pregame and really what the interaction between coaches and players are at the game as well as fan interactions throughout the game. Sounds like a super cool experience. So when you take a look at the scouting process so far for you guys, do you have a key area you're focusing on or is it normally stay around Ohio? Yeah, so I think our goal year in and year out, our number one goal is let's dominate the state of Ohio. Um, and we've done a great job getting a lot of those top recruits at our game day um, visits throughout the season. Um, but obviously, we're not going to pass up on good talent outside the state. So really, it's Ohio number one. And let's look out on the, the bordering states such as Indiana, Michigan, Kentucky, and Pennsylvania. And when we take a look at this new age of social media that's in full force, does that help you guys bring in players? Do you utilize that a lot at all? Or is it more the traditional route? Yeah, no. So you're, you're seeing it more and more kind of go away from whatever the traditional route may be. Um, Twitter is actually a huge recruiting tool um, now in the whole recruiting process. So a lot of the times, uh, coaches first thing, well, let's go to that player's uh, Twitter page. And, and what that has is height and weight, uh, cumulative GPA, and most importantly, uh, their huddle highlight tape where we can do you know evaluations off that highlight. And when you take a look at that social media side of things, do you guys take that into account when you're looking at players on like if they're doing things correctly or not and what they're doing outside of athletics? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously we want really talented football players, but um, you know, football goes far beyond the field. So anytime we can see a guy, whether it's student council or you know other sports, um, that's always a, a key thing in recruiting. And when you take a look at this coming off season, are there any key positions you guys are looking at in terms of recruitment? Yeah, so I think at any level of football, you always want to dominate the trenches. So in terms of O-line, D-line, um, it's hard to find those guys. So every single year, we're always trying to find those, those great O-linemen and D-linemen, uh, just because there's, there's not as many of those guys, such as you know receivers and DBs. There's always going to be a lot of those guys out there, uh, but it's really hard to find those O-linemen and D-linemen. And obviously, we've already talked about it a little bit, but Coach Geyser all season long has stressed the importance of academics and off the field involvement, and in, in specifically in the community service side of things. So, is that something you guys take heavily into account when recruiting? Yeah, um, you know, I think the first thing you always want to find that football talent, but anything extra on top of that is is always great, and it might separate those guys who, hey, these guys are pretty, you know, even. What's the thing really separating that guy? And that could be, you know, off the field stuff that they do. And how many people do you guys have helping you guys in the recruiting process? Yeah, so, um, you know, this year we have a lot more student assistants, so, um, you know, it's, it's always going to be your, your full-time coaches, um, your GAs, but this year we have a, a great group of student assistants who are already heavily um, in the recruiting process, helped out a ton with the game day visits, um, but now they're going to, you know, take that next step and really help out with our official and unofficial visits from here on out. Well, Coach, to kind of wrap things up, when you take a look at those game day visits and all those sorts of things to get them people invested and more involved here and in trying to get that recruiting process rolling, what's the best way for them to reach out to you guys and show that interest? Yeah, so, you know, we do a great job. Um, Coach Geyser's big goal this spring was we're going to get out to every single high school in Ohio that plays the sport of football, and uh, we did that this spring. So we're already in contact with those high school head coaches um, and a lot of the players that we want. So really, you know, we're in constant communi uh, communication with those players, those recruits, those coaches, um, and really, you know, from here on out, it's just getting those guys invites to, to sign up for our visits uh, come December and January. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time and good luck in recruitment this offseason. I appreciate it. Of course. When we return, we'll be joined by Coach Geyser to wrap up the show and preview the coming America's Crossroads Bowl game in early December. Stay tuned right here on AUTV.
welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV. Coach, it's been great to talk with you and your team here today, but before we go, we're going to take a look at the schedule and how your team fared this season so far. So first off, how are you feeling with the opportunity for you guys to play in a bowl game in the coming weeks? We're, we're excited. It's, it's a, like I said, it's a great reward for the journey our guys have you know, undertaken during the season. And you get a chance to finish on a high note of winning seven in a row and eight of nine. The reward you get now is you get a chance to be recognized in one of four Division II bowl games. And so it's a great honor. And when you take a look at the recap of the season, how do you feel the team performed and how content are you right now with the record you guys currently hold? Yeah, I thought, you know, by the end of the season, I thought we maximized our potential. And that's, that's kind of every, every season, as I mentioned, is a journey unto itself. And it's a growing opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, we stubbed our toe early. We weren't ready, didn't figure out how to finish. And through that journey throughout the season, the team grew closer together. They maximized their talents. They played for each other. And they're able to, you know, have eight wins at the regular season. That's a great honor to them. Finish as a runner-up in the league and get a chance to play in one of four bowl games. That's, that's a great cap to the season. And it's great for the seniors to be able to, to, be able to honor them that way. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time here. Do you have any final thoughts for the audience? I, I appreciate, the, uh, appreciate the staff and, the, and uh, I would appreciate yourself, Kate, as well, for this show. You guys do a tremendous job, I and mean, it's an honor for me to be affiliated with you guys, and I appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk about Ashland football. Well, Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That was today's episode of the Doug Geyser Show, with the Eagles taking down the Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers on the road, 56-23. to They next look to go up against the McKendry Bearcats in early December in hopes of taking home a win in the America's Crossroads Bowl. The outing is set for Friday, December 1st, with kickoff set for 6.05 on the road in Hammond, Indiana. Tune into the game on 88.9 WRDL to listen 15 minutes before the kickoff for the pregame show, with the game brought to you by the students and faculty of the Ashland University Journalism and Digital Media Department. I'm Kate Krakis, and thank you for tuning into the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV.